Clemson Hotline is on the air. A one-hour talk show giving Clemson fans a power hour of Tiger Sports Talk. Clemson Hotline is presented by Y'all.com and brought to you by Amtrak. Clemson Hotline is direct from Tiger Country on a network of radio stations across the great state of South Carolina. And as always, a podcast edition of our show is available for download in iTunes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back in to the final episode of the Clemson Hotline here for the 20. 20- 13 season of course we'll pick things back up again though in august as we take off the summer i thank you all for being with us throughout the season and on this week's episode we're going to take a look back at some of those moments from the year that really uh really meant a lot to tiger fans really meant a lot to me in the program we're also going to talk about the clemson tigers and this round robin format that the atlantic coast conference has for the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament in baseball. And finally, the Tigers, of course, going down to Tallahassee and dropping two out of three to the Seminoles after a blistering 8-2 to two start in that series. And the Clemson Tigers, of course, get the fifth seed in the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. So we'll have that and a whole lot more here for you on the Clemson Hotline on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. Morning to you too. Okay, so I was at night. I had a sword and our house was a castle. There was this angry dragon. It was kind of scary. Oh, yeah? But I protected the castle. Oh, that's my brave little man. I'm glad our castle is safe. Your home is your castle, and sometimes you need help defending it. The National Association of Realtors supports maintaining homeowner tax incentives because they make home ownership more affordable for more families. Learn more at houselogic.com. A winning team requires having great team members. If you're a landowner interested in selling timber or are considering buying or selling land, call the winning team of Cross Creek Timber and Cross Creek Realty LLC today. Put the knowledge and skills of professional licensed foresters and realtors to work for your team. To learn more about services offered by Cross Creek Timber and Cross Creek Realty LLC, visit www.crosscreektimber.com and easily follow the link to real estate or reach them by phone 864-517-3620 or 864-517-3621. It was the moment I realized I was about to lose my job. I found myself searching for pills instead of just being with my family. At that moment, I finally decided to get help for my addiction to opioids. The prescription painkillers. At TurnToHelpNow.com, you'll learn that opioid dependence is a real medical condition and that there are different ways to get help including those in a private setting, without the need for daily visits. That moment led me to TurnToHelpNow.com. Make now your moment. Visit TurnToHelpNow.com today. The 1988 season was a great year for the Clemson Tigers, finishing 10-2 with a win over Oklahoma in the Citrus Bowl. But it was a better year for Clemson fans. That season, Tigertown Graphics became your source for custom tees, promotional items, and embroidery. Conveniently located in the heart of downtown Clemson, their retail store proudly displays Clemson shirts that are designed and printed directly on site. Whether you're looking for the latest Clemson t-shirts or ordering products for your school, organization, or business, Tigertown Graphics can help with all of your t-shirt needs. Find them online at www.tigertowngraphics.com. A Clemson tradition since 1988. Ladies, when was the last time you were happy with your body? If you're like most women, it was before you turned 40. That's because age 40 is when hormonal imbalance starts causing symptoms like hot flashes, sleeplessness, low energy, irritability, and lack of sexual desire. It's not your fault. And you don't have to let these symptoms reduce your quality of life anymore. Because now we have Amberin. Amberin is clinically shown to balance hormones and relieve the uncomfortable symptoms of menopause safely and effectively. In fact, Amberin is so powerful, we guarantee you will love your body again. Right now, you can receive a guaranteed risk-free trial of Amberin with a 30-day supply free. Call now and we'll send it to you today. 1-800-586-6065. And when you call right now, you'll also receive our amazing weight loss program for women over 40 absolutely 
absolutely free. But you have to call now at 1-800-586-6065. That's 1-800-586-6065. Welcome back in, Clemson Tiger fans, to the Clemson Hotline here on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. And, yes, this is the final edition of the show until August. We take off the summer and live it up a little bit, so I hope you don't mind that we do that in the downtimes. But don't forget, Wednesday nights, 9 p.m., Tiger Net Talk will come to you almost each and every Wednesday throughout the summer. Follow us on Spreecast. You'll get those emails letting you know when the show is, or you can... Uh, definitely check out check us out on Twitter. We're at Clemson Sports. We'll put that out there if things change. So thank you so much for being here with us again. The ways you can take part with us, 803-450-0086. That's 803-450-0086. Hashtag TN Talk, all one word on Twitter. And email us, Clemson81 at gmail.com. And we'll make sure and get what you have to say on the program. And if you're listening to the podcast edition, I guess we'll get it on in August, but anyway, the Clemson Tigers wrap up the regular season 39-17, and 18-12 and in Atlantic Coast Conference play. They finish on an absolute blistering pace, in fact, finishing 8-2 and two over their final 10 ball games. A nine-game winning streak snapped this weekend down in Tallahassee, and this team had been on fire uh, since April the 1st. They've really been playing some outstanding baseball, and I think for this Clemson Tiger team, and we've talked about this throughout the season, it was a definite improvement over where they were uh, just a few short months ago. I think you've seen this team really grow up before our eyes, and they have an opportunity, I think, in the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament to maybe make a little bit of noise. But this round-robin format is terrible. It is one of the worst things that you can imagine. I'll, I'll be honest, I've said this before, and I'll stand by it. It is the only system worse than the BCS format. And that's because in this round-robin format where you've got a couple of, I believe they call them pools, you've got pool A and pool B. The problem is is that you could potentially lose your opening pool game. And then if the team that beats you plays before you on Friday or Thursday for that matter, guess what? If they win, you have no chance of catching them. So the potential exists for Clemson. If they were to lose to NC State in their opening game, NC State's the fourth seed. That game is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Tigers are off Thursday and don't play again until Friday against the number one seed, UNC. That game's at 7 p.m. on Friday. If Clemson were to lose to NC State, get this. And NC State beats Miami on Friday before Clemson plays North Carolina. Clemson could be out of the series, out of the tournament, only playing one game. There's a, that's a major problem with me. And it was all about making sure that everybody had an opportunity to play, that every team played the same amount of games. Thank goodness they're going away from this. I, and, and you guys know I'm not a huge fan of baseball, but what I am a fan of is a good playoff. A good double elimination tournament. This wackadoo, round robin, ACC championship series that the the ACC minds have put on, it scares me. It scares me that people in charge said, this is a good idea. Terrible. But you know what? You can say that Clemson controls their own destiny because all you have to do is go out and win ball games. You go out and beat NC State, a very good team on Wednesday, and you don't have to worry about that scenario coming your way. But because Clemson plays after them on Friday, that's the possibility. The championship from pools A and B will be played at 1 p.m. on Sunday. All of that, of course, barring any weather or weather events which have tended to crop up from time to time as of late. And, of course, the Duke Blue Devils will have a bit of a home field advantage seeing as these, these games are played in the Durham Bulls Stadium. You guys, you lollygag the ball around the empty. You lollygag your way down to first. You lollygag in and out of the dugout. Do you know 
what that makes you? Larry? Lollygaggers. Lollygaggers. <laughs> Lollygaggers, that great line from Bull Durham. But I'll tell you, this Clemson team, they had their opportunities this past weekend down at Florida State, and I think that's the thing that, that stung the most. Obviously, you win that opening game 8-2. to two, You feel very comfortable and confident because you've been playing such good baseball. You come out in game two, though. Florida State jumps out on Clemson early. They get up 2 nothing. The Tigers uh, don't give up any more runs, but just can never get those bats rolling again. And that carried over to game three. The Tigers lost game one. I mean, excuse me, game two, two to one. And then in game three, multiple opportunities with with the bases loaded. And the Clemson bats either strike out, pop up, just, you know, just, I don't know if, if it was a, a little bit of pressing at the plate. It's something we hadn't seen from this team in a while. They've been in a very nice zone as of late. I mean, this team really hasn't done what they did. And, and, and Florida State's a good team. That should be said as well. It's not like Florida State is a bad team. They're 20 and 10 right now, 44 and 11 overall. Only three home losses this season for the Florida State Seminoles. They've got a game uh, tomorrow against North Carolina. That, I believe, is a makeup game. It's at UNC. So both of those teams, the top two seeds in this tournament, will be playing. Uh, against each other just a couple of days before the whole tournament kicks off. So that's an interesting dynamic that I think you have to look at. But when you leave guys on base, I mean, when you leave runners on base and you, you have opportunities to put teams away or at least get you know, get some runs across and you don't do it, you're going to lose. Clemson left 13 runners on base in that 6-1 to one loss Saturday to the Florida State Seminoles, and 10 of those were in scoring position. So... You can't fault anything but the Clemson bats. Lots of people pointing fingers at Jack Leggett somehow. And you guys know I've been a critic of Jack Leggett for a long, long time here on the program. I've never held anything back uh, when it comes to Jack Leggett. But this I can't put on Jack Leggett. He's not at the plate. I didn't see too many too many mistakes on the base pass that made me concerned. It really came down to getting the job done. Florida State did. Clemson didn't. Ten runs scored by both teams in this series. Clemson got eight in the first game, two in the final two, and the Seminoles win the series two games to one. We'll be back with a look back at some of the greatest moments this season on the Clemson Hotline. Stay with us. By a friend of mine after class, me and him and this other fool decide that we'll drink up what's left. So the look so help thyself. First time for everything, mm, my ears still rank. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this feels good, doesn't it? Flash and bat. Here it is. Oh yeah, welcome back into the program. Thank you so much. A little look back at that Chick-fil-A Bowl victory, 25 to 24 over the LSU Tigers. Thank you so much, Clemson fans, for being here with us on another edition of the Clemson Hotline. And on this segment of the show, we rarely do this, but we're going to take a look back at some of the best moments from this season's episodes of the Clemson Hotline, whether that's interviews with Bamani Jones, Perry Tuttle, the lovely and talented Allie Rogers when she joined us, Terrell McIntyre, all of that. But we'll start right here with our thoughts after Clemson took down LSU over in Atlanta in the Chick-fil-A Bowl to end the Clemson season 11-2. and But how about Clemson bouncing back? And on that second drive of the game, the second time they had the football, moving right down the field against a vaunted LSU defense to tie the score at seven, and what that meant, perhaps for the confidence in for this ball club, the rest of the game. Not to mention that on LSU's first legitimate drive, all of a sudden, the Clemson Tiger defense just electrifies Atlanta. It was unbelievable. The play of Malachi Goodman throughout this ball game, if he had played at that standard the entire season, and let's be fair here, because when we get to the basketball segment, of this program, we're going to talk a little bit about Milton Jennings, the often criticized McDonald's All-American, and probably criticized because he deserves a lot of the criticism, even though he's a young man. He deserves a lot of the criticism because there are many mistakes that have happened. But Malachi Goodman, maybe not with the exact same expectations coming out of high school, but a kid who people thought would be a fantastic defensive end, never played with that drive and intensity that we saw Monday night in Atlanta. We had not seen that type of effort out of him. It reminded me, those of you that have seen the movie The Blind Side of of Michael Orr and how he was never an aggressive player. And Malachi Goodman is a very nice guy. He's a stand-up individual, but he never played with that drive and that high motor that I think he needed to be as successful as he was against LSU. Oh, man. Remember that? That was a great feeling. And Malachi Goodman, of course, of course, going in the fourth round of the Atlanta Falcons, and that was a big surprise for me when that happened. But I guess the potential, what they saw in him maybe that evening, what they saw evaluating film, looking at those those uh, intangibles, the things that you just can't, uh, you know, I, I guess you, they're tangibles in that he has a huge wingspan, long hands to – keep the offensive lineman off of him, but ultimately Malachi Goodman, a fourth-round pick, and he was a big, impactful player in that Chick-fil-A bowl game. Josh in the chat room says, how long has the round-robin format been around for the ACC tournament? Josh, that's a great question. I want to say it's been three or four years, maybe more. Uh, I don't think much more than that, though. Uh, It is going away, thank goodness, because like I said before, it is terrible, and that scenario has played out, I believe, one other time for Clemson where they lost the opening game and knew that they were eliminated before they even played the other games. As I just kind of reflect back, I seem to remember that happening maybe two or three seasons ago. So it hasn't been around forever, and it is going away. So that's a good thing. Now, at the beginning of the season, of course, last August, Clemson Tigers were the Clemson Tigers were getting ready to take on the Auburn Tigers over in Atlanta, and uh, we were kind of taking a look at that game, and here were our thoughts on the Tigers versus the Tigers that happened twice over in Atlanta against LSU with that victory, 25-24. And, of course, Clemson's opening season win as well against Auburn. Here is some of our preview of that game. Now, we are definitely going to get into the mix of this Auburn-Clemson matchup. It's such a big game for you, Tiger fans, and I know you're all excited about it. And imagine the drive over to Atlanta, the 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 tough taste that you've had in your mouth coming out of the Georgia Dome the past few times you've been over there. Plus, I think you got to go back all the way to 2003 against Tennessee. 
that ball game was the last time Clemson won a game in Atlanta, and that includes every other season when you go over there to face the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. So you can only imagine what a win in this one would mean for Clemson. And after getting punched in your face, and that's what exactly, swallowing your own teeth as you walked out of there in 2008 is something that still stings Clemson fans as Alabama just pummeled the Clemson Tigers. The only bright spot in that entire game may have been C.J. Spiller's kickoff return late to open the second half. Outside of that, it was lights out. Alabama headed in the right direction. Tommy Bowden headed out the door not too long after that. (laughs) Yes, punched in your face, your teeth traveling down the back of your throat. Oh, And that was true. And now you've got, what, back-to-back wins in Atlanta? Not yet. You haven't had a chance to get one at Georgia Tech since. Hopefully that'll happen. Not this year. Of course, Georgia Tech's in Clemson this season. And you never know what's going to happen once the ACC changes the schedules up again later on once Louisville's in the mix. I, who knows? But uh, I would assume we will be in Atlanta, not this year, but next. And that might be the next opportunity for us to pick up a win over there. I think most of us would hope that there are bigger and better bowls for the Tigers in the next few seasons uh, than the Chick-fil-A Bowl. That unless the Chick-fil-A Bowl – happens to be one of the, the what do you call the uh, semifinals for the championship games. And finally, before we go out to break, man, this has been fun looking back. I don't know if you're enjoying this as much as I am, but Bamani Jones joined us on the program before some of you listened to the show. Bamani talked to us about Clemson and Florida State. If you don't know Bamani, uh, he is a fixture on Around the Horn on ESPN. But right now you've got this powerful Clemson offense, a powerful Florida State defense. What are your thoughts on this game going in as the Tigers travel down to Tallahassee? Well, I mean, what team has let us down more over the last 10 years with their purported resurrection than Clemson and Florida State? That's that's the thing. Somebody, Somebody in the course of this game has to be halfway for real. Now, normally Clemson keeps it going early and then tails off late. Florida State normally bails out early. The thing is, this is the most talented Florida State team that I can remember seeing since the early part of last decade. And with Clemson, it's tricky because as impressive as they were against Auburn, especially the way they ran the ball, we've seen that Auburn does not appear to be any good. So the question really for me in this game is going to be Clemson, which last year really had trouble rushing the passer. That was their biggest difficulty was rushing the passer and stopping the run. Those are the two things they couldn't do. Are they going to be able to get heat on Florida State? Because if they can't get heat on E.J. On e. Manuel, it's less likely that they're going to trip into what Florida State's probably greatest weakness is, which is he makes substandard decisions that time. Well, the last time the Tigers traveled down to Tallahassee for a top-ten ranked matchup was back in 2000. Clemson lost that one 54-7. to And when you look at the way Florida State's defense played this past weekend against Wake Forest, you've got to think from a Clemson perspective that Brandon Jenkins not being a part of that uh, Florida State defense is going to be a big key for them. But, but as you look towards this game, is the bigger strength Florida State's defense or Clemson's offense and all the weapons that they have? Well, I'd be inclined to say Clemson's off just because we're talking about Boyd and Sammy Watkins and Andre Ellington still there. I mean, that's, that's there. The only thing about it, though, with Florida State, we talk about Brandon Jenkins not being there. problem is they've got more of them. Like, we're at that point now with Florida State where yeah. they used to just be rotating guys in in the front seven in particular. Well, okay, well, this guy's not playing well. we got another one. So if Jenkins is going to be out, it's going to be questionable how much people really notice. I mean, of course you want to have that one individual playmaker at defensive end, but they've got so many guys on that defensive line that are going to be able to rush the passer that I'm not sure how big it's going to be that he doesn't play. Pomani Jones says EJ Manuel makes substandard decisions. I absolutely love it. I, I really do love that. And I know the guys in the chat room are talking about Robert's mom. She's become a celebrity. She's almost as popular uh, as Gino's mom, if you followed Clemson recruiting back in the day. Uh, but let's see, Chris says, L, are you going to have a Tiger Net Talk blooper segment? Uh, Chris, most would say the entire show is filled with bloopers. This is basically uh, 50, 56 minutes of bloopers and four minutes of good content. And Clemson Tom says, ha ha, Robert's mom. Yeah, Robert's mom and her glorious appearance, uh, she's still wondering where Robert is. I have no idea, Robert's mom, but thank you for being a loyal listener to the show. We'd love to hear from you again as well. Stay with us. We'll come back with more right here on the Clemson Hotline. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Thank you so much for being here. 
sneak downtown with my fake ID and watch Doug McCormick rock TDs on a Friday night. Want a bright start to summer? Ask Sherwin-Williams during the Sunny Day Sale and save 30% on paints and stains May 19th through the 27th. With colors like pool blue, organic green, and daffodil, we've got everything you need to add a splash of color. Visit your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams paint store and save. Find your nearest store at sherwinwilliams.com slash sale. Retail sales only. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. It's time to buckle in for Sears Super Memorial Day Appliance Event. Keep your hands and feet inside the ride, because you're going to want them for these scream-worthy offers, like up to 30% off appliances. <laughs> Plus, hold on to your hats, because you'll also get an extra 5% off appliances with your Sears card. This is one Memorial Day ride that's sure to be... Amazing! This is Sears. Savings range from 5 to 30%. Exclusion supply. See store for details. Offer valid 523 through 62. Hey there, Tiger fans. When you take yourself out to the ball game, make sure that you're staying at the Clemson University Conference Center and Inn. That's right. It's the closest hotel to Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Lakeside accommodations. Complimentary continental breakfast bar with waffles. The Seasons by the Lake Restaurant. Joe's Place Bar. And the Walker Golf Course are all waiting for you right around the corner from Doug Kingsmore Stadium. For reservations, contact General Manager Sharon Franks at SharonF at Clemson.edu or call one 888- Eight six five four nine zero two zero and ask to speak to Sharon. Buy yourself some peanuts and cracker jacks, but make sure that you stay at the Clemson University Conference Center and in. This is a referral service. Calls will be routed to an independent referral insurance agency. Do you know the number one cause of bankruptcy? No, it's not losing your job or running up credit card debt. It's not even divorce. It's medical costs. If you and your family don't have health insurance, just one serious illness or accident could be financially devastating. But now there's good news, really good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide health insurance for all Americans, even uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now anyone can get health insurance even if you have a pre-existing medical condition. I repeat, now anyone can get health insurance coverage. Call now for a free no-obligation quote on affordable health plans available to you. Again, this is a free hotline for anyone, even if you have pre-existing conditions. Protect you and your family from sudden unexpected medical costs. Call the free health insurance hotline right now at 1-800-838-5562. That's 1-800-838-5562. Call 1-800-838-5562. G-Dog Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove is located on Highway 1 near the Barnyard Flea Market. Modern, relaxing dentistry with TVs and headphones in every room, nitrous and even oral sedation. Digital diagnostic x-rays for better quality and 85% less radiation exposure. And check out their new Clemson patient special. Mention that you heard about G-Dog here on the Clemson Sports Talk programs and receive an extra 5% off all services. If you don't have a regular dentist, go see my dentist. Is Dr. Rick Jackson at G-Dog. That's Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove. Remember all the stories growing up as oh, man, and thank you so much to all our sponsors throughout the entire season. Don't forget, Gamecock fans, you can... <laughs> I love this. Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove. They'll clean that first tooth of yours at regular price. And that second and last tooth, absolutely free. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Thank you so much for being here. The final edition of the show until August. We can give the Gamecocks a little summer ribbing there, if you will. And we are looking forward to the upcoming season just as well as you are. But let's look back, though. We've got a whole lot left to talk about here that we want to look back on and uh, one of those great moments and one of the great interviews that we had on the show was when we had DeAndre Hopkins uh, join us. There was no doubt about his talent this season, and when he left, uh, we actually had him on TigerNet Talk. But following a Duke game where he had three touchdown catches on his first three grabs of the game, I talked about this Clemson program and the model of consistency that we were seeing. A real shot here for Clemson to finish the season with only one loss during the regular season against Florida State in a game where Clemson had control at one point. 
You know, we always talk about controlling our destiny. If you read my post on TigerNet this week that we put out each week with TigerNet Talk, I said I don't need my team to be perfect, and I don't. I don't require perfection from the Clemson Tigers on a week-in and week-out basis. And once the BCS is expanded a little bit and four teams are in the playoffs, perfection will not be required, contrary to popular belief. We know that already. You see it. Two losses from LSU, two losses from South Carolina. And I don't care what conference you play in, you have a shot if you are consistent to start at the top and struggle once, maybe twice, and still be in the mix depending on who you struggle against. Clemson doesn't have to be perfect each and every year for them to play for the national title or even get in this four-team playoff that's right around the corner. They just have to be consistent. And I'm telling you, right now, what we see or what we have seen this year is consistency like we haven't seen in a long, long time. And I would say that we had that the entire season. I think most of you will agree with us. I think the entire year you saw Clemson being very consistent. And we called it right there. We said we thought Clemson would, you know, only have one loss, especially heading into that South Carolina game. Of course, we know how that's gone, and that's not something we want to reflect on. But we certainly know that the direction of this program uh, is definitely headed in the right way. And that's what's so important to so many of you. Thank you for being here. 803-450-0086. That's the phone number for this show. That's the phone number for Tiger Net Talk. And all our shows are archived, and all our interviews are archived are archived on ClemsonSportsTalk.com. And somebody asked me, how can they watch the show live? Just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com slash live. Make sure live is not in caps, all lowercase letters, and you too can join us here. The chat room is fantastic. The guys in there are great. We've got Andy, Erica, Chris, Clemson Tom, RC Sports Cards, Josh, and a host of others uh, who are joining us. We also had Clemson legend Perry Tuttle on the program talking about a national championship team. Clemson's obviously made that climb. You think about the consistency that we just mentioned in this new format where four teams get in and eventually eight teams will get in. You know that's going to happen. You know the playoffs expanding. You no longer have to be perfect, and that's the great thing about college football. ESPN and the hype machine sells you perfection the entire season until they can't. And what I mean by that is once everybody has one loss. And just a few short seasons ago, I put it out on Twitter An image from ESPN that said, every one-loss team has a chance. Well, they want you to believe you have to go undefeated until everybody has a loss. And then they want you to believe that it's okay because one-loss teams can play for the title. And maybe occasionally, if you get lucky like an LSU, maybe a two-loss team gets in there. But what do championship caliber teams have? Perry Tuttle gave us his insight into that right here on the Clemson Hotline. Well, Perry, you've been a part of a national championship team at Clemson, much like Dabo Sweeney was a part of a national championship team at Alabama. And having him as Clemson's head coach, somebody who's been a part of something like that, what does that mean for this team? And what do you see specifically from Dabo Sweeney? I know you're still very involved with the program. What do you see from him that makes him the coach that's, that's able to, to get Clemson to this elite level that they're playing? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Uh, you know, being part of a team like that, there's something about um, experiencing um, a major win in your life. You know, there's a, you know, a lot of us, we experience wins like marriage and we experience, you know, having children. But from a sports team, uh, being on the national championship team, like uh, Coach has, um I mean, you can just see that uh, come out, not only uh, in the way he approaches the game, but certainly his excitement of what it means to, uh, uh, to win. I think, I think he gives uh, a very healthy perspective to his players um, of what it's going to be like when you win. I mean, he doesn't have to say it that way, but uh, I've known him for uh, some time now, and and I've always uh, been thrilled to be around him because he speaks the language. And, uh, and everybody around him, um, I mean, he has a 360 team with his coaching staff of players that really gets the idea of coming from a championship uh, mentality. Um, you know, when we won it in, in 81, I mean, we had guys, uh, you know, Jeff Davis, Jeff Bryant, Terry Kennard. We had those kinds of guys, Cliff, uh, Cliff Austin, who were on the uh, uh, 78 
uh, Gator Bowl team with Steve Fuller and Jerry Butler, uh, the Bostic, and we were fourth in the nation. And uh, winning the ACC as a freshman, we we kind of grew up in Clemson expecting to win. And so when I see a year, um, I mean, it really became only natural for us to go to the next level. And Coach Ford, um, who, who is probably my favorite coach, uh, did a, a great job because he, too, uh, knew what it meant to, uh, to be on a winning team. And he mentions those expectations, how important they are, and that's exactly what this Clemson Tiger team has. And now the fan base is beginning to get it more and more, which continues to make people want to win uh, each and every game. And it's not saying that you, you didn't want that before, but I think now you believe that you can. I think you've seen that you can. You haven't had those those games where you've fallen down flat really outside of, I would say, over the past couple of seasons. Uh, when you look back to that West Virginia ball game, maybe some of you say letting Florida State off of the hook ha- after having a 28-14 to lead. But the consistency of this program has been tremendous, and it's obviously – headed in the right direction. That's why I'm looking forward so much to this upcoming season, especially August 31st, 2013, against the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, We put a link in the show notes. If you hadn't had a chance to see it, I'm going to pop it up on the screen right now. If you get a chance, tune into this episode of 3 and Out. I was on with B.J. Bennett and the guys down in southern Georgia, the coastal areas. They also... Uh, have their program on, I believe, 104.3 over in Hilton Head and Savannah. So if you, you tune in to those guys in the afternoon drive there, a fantastic show, great guys, awesome coverage of Southern College football. They have me on every once in a while to talk about our Clemson Tigers. And the thing I enjoy most there and being on with BJ is probably when we had him on with us not that long ago on Tiger Net Talk, uh, BJ actually picked Clemson to win the national championship this season. Uh, in his season preview, he went through all the ins and the outs of the games. You look at Clemson's schedule, how favorable it is. You have midweek games, there's Thursday games, I should say, that give you some extra weekends off. You've got a couple of buys mixed in there. So there's no doubting the fact that Clemson has an opportunity to have not just a special season, but could you get to the 12-win point this season? Could you get to that magical 13-win season? I mean, all of that's still on the table for your Clemson Tigers. Stay with us. Final segment of the show coming up. Thank you so much for being here on the finale, the spring finale, I should say, of the Clemson Hotline. We'll pick it back up in August on the 25th. We'll be back. Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through. The whole summer through, Georgia is going to be on my mind. Cannot wait for that game. The Tigers, the Bulldogs getting it on that 1980s classic, 10 years in the making. 2003, the last time these two teams got together, the Bulldogs came in to Death Valley and smacked the Tigers. Just took the Clemson Tigers to task the next to last game for Jim Phillips. Oh, man. That's going to be a great one. It's going to be hot. The, 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 the Georgia defense will hopefully be running on empty as the Clemson Tiger offense is hopefully clicking. We'll have a whole lot of that, though, the first week of the show for you here on the Clemson Hotline. So August 25th. The show will return, of course, during the summer, though. You can follow us on ClemsonSportsTalk.com. Tweet to us at Clemson Sports and listen to Tiger Net Talks as we'll be putting out those programs as well. And look forward, get, Looking forward to giving you some more insights into some of the things that we have coming up around the corner. I've mentioned it here on the show a couple of times, but just have not quite been able to solidify everything the way we'd like to. But we did have a chance to solidify an interview with Miss Allie Rogers. I know you guys remember her. She was, of course, the runner-up for Miss America this year. And here's when we ask Allie 
about how she became a, an athlete before she got into these beauty pageants. And you get to hear her tickle the keys a little bit as she plays some Jackson 5. And that does not want to play. Allie Rogers audio not wanting to play. Here we go. Allie Rogers. <laughs> It's amazing the way she does that. That's right. That's her, Miss South Carolina, Allie Rogers. Absolutely killing it on the keys. I'm, I'm telling you what, I was so impressed, Allie. I, that's the best rendition of that song I've ever heard play on the piano in my life. Well, it was it was a lot of fun. It, it took all I had in me not to just get up and dance and forget about playing, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and I think I think the crowd enjoyed it, too. Now, now, you talked about not growing up a pageant girl, but what was it like, or where did your passion for sports develop? Well, I have an older brother and a bunch of guy cousins, and so I didn't have a choice but to learn how to throw the ball and to, to play outside and to just rough and tough it with the boys, and that was... That was my childhood. So I, I grew up, I uh, started playing softball when I was four and started playing golf when I was nine and got into a lot of music stuff too. But, um, but softball was my passion. And so I, I never saw myself as a pageant girl, but, you know, my, my plans kind of took a turn and it, it turned out to work out all right. And I surely hope that we get another opportunity to have Allie Rogers on the program with us or do some work with her down the line. I'll tell you what, she's a fantastic girl. She is a great ambassador for Clemson University and even winning. She's so busy. If you follow her on Twitter, uh, she's on the road so much. I can't imagine what it would be like if she were uh, Miss America and what that all entails and traveling around and, and what it takes just to – just to get that job done. I mean, she's as busy as can be, and, and, and she's just Miss South Carolina. If you're Miss America, you got to go everywhere. I mean, you're constantly moving around. Speaking of moving around, how about Boogie Terrell McIntyre, a guy that could move the crowds in Little John Coliseum with his left-handed three-point shots, who led the Clemson Tigers uh, many nights in scoring as he lit up Atlantic Coast Conference competition, the smallest guy on the floor, but he never was nervous about being out there, not just at – the collegiate level, but at the professional level, and also going back to his days of playing middle school and junior varsity basketball. Here is our interview, or a snippet of our interview, from Terrell McIntyre right here on the Clemson Hotline earlier this season. Well, it seems like when you were at Clemson, most people referred to you as Boogie. Now, I want you to explain where that nickname came from, but it didn't seem to translate because everything that I saw coming out of Europe was T-Mac, T-Mac. But where did that nickname Boogie start? Uh, it started from uh, our strength coach, uh, Ty Wright. Um, he used to call me that because he said the way I move on the court was like I was dancing when I make my moves. So he was just <laughs> like I was boogieing up the court, up and down the court when I make moves, you know, trying to shake people and, you know, give all kind of fakes. So uh, he, he, he started that, and it stuck while I was at Clemson, you know. And, and yeah, when I went overseas, everything was T-Mac. You know, they called me that at home and in Europe. So, uh it, it just stuck. But Boogie, but anybody from Clemson that see me now, they still call me Boogie. <laughs> now, when did you when did you realize, I mean, for an undersized guy playing the game of basketball, when did you realize that you had a knack for the game and maybe you could play not only at the collegiate level, but even make a nice run at playing in the NBA? I knew I, I could play with, I feel like I could play with anybody because I had a, a guy by the name of uh, Elgin Blue who recently passed away as my mentor. He was uh I was in eighth grade, and he was a JV basketball coach for the high school. And after I would leave my eighth grade practice, my junior high game uh, practice, I stayed, like, walking distance from the high school. So I would walk to the high school. At first, I started out watching them practice, you know, watching the JV practice and the varsity practice. So eventually, he started letting me practice with the JV, and I was in eighth grade. And, you know, these 10th graders, and, uh, you know, and I was, you know, one of the best players on the court, you know, and that's when I knew that I could play. I felt I could play with anybody because them guys was much older and I was playing like I was at my junior high school. 
Man, some fantastic interviews there with a number of people that we've had on the show throughout the season. And if you noticed, I'm not wearing my typical orange. I am rocking an Edisto Outdoors shirt. If you want to join the Edisto Outdoors street team, simply email me, clemson81 at gmail.com. I know you guys like money. I know you like green. You want to make some extra cash during the summer. Email me, clemson81 at gmail.com. And I'll get you in touch with the right people at Edisto Outdoors. They'll send you some information, and you can join the street team throughout the summer and make some extra cash, make some ends meets, pay some power bills. You know that heat is going to be coming soon. You're going to have to run the AC a lot, and you want to be able to do it and not have to worry about that bill. Stay with us. Final segment of the show coming up for the entire season. We'll be back, though, with Clemson Hotline in August on the 25th. Stay with us, Tiger fans, through the break. Some of our great sponsors. There's no mistake. No doubt about it. Excuse me if I sing a little loud. Blake Austin of South Carolina Farm Bureau is an insurance agent you can count on to meet all your needs. Home, auto, health, life, you name it, Blake's got you covered, and he can save you on your yearly rates. Call him now for a free quote. 803-259-5008. That's 803-259-5008. Or... Just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com and click on the Farm Bureau logo to be connected to Blake. Do like I do and work with the best agent around, and you can tweet that. Mom, I had the best dream. <laughs> well, good morning to you, too. Okay, so I was at night. I had a sword, and our house was a castle. There was this angry dragon. It was kind of scary. Oh, yeah? But I protected the castle. Oh, that's my brave little man. I'm glad our castle is safe. Your home is your castle, and sometimes you need help defending it. The National Association of Realtors supports maintaining homeowner tax incentives because they make home ownership more affordable for more families. Learn more at houselogic.com. A winning team requires having great team members. If you're a landowner interested in selling timber or are considering buying or selling land, call the winning team of Cross Creek Timber and Cross Creek Realty LLC today. Put the knowledge and skills of professional, licensed foresters and realtors to work for your team. To learn more about the forestry and real estate services offered by Cross Creek Timber, call 864-517-3620 and Cross Creek Realty LLC at 864 517 Three six two one, or visit www.crosscreektimber.com and easily follow the link to real estate. Ladies, when was the last time you were happy with your body? If you're like most women, it was before you turned 40. That's because age 40 is when hormonal imbalance starts causing symptoms like hot flashes, sleeplessness, low energy, irritability, and lack of sexual desire. It's not your fault. And you don't have to let these symptoms reduce your quality of life anymore. Because now we have Amberin. Amberin is clinically shown to balance hormones and relieve the uncomfortable symptoms of menopause safely and effectively. In fact, Amberin is so powerful, we guarantee you will love your body again. Right now, you can receive a guaranteed risk-free trial of Amberin with a 30-day supply free. Call now and we'll send it to you today. 1-800-586-6065. And when you call right now, you'll also receive our amazing weight loss program for women over 40 absolutely free. But you have to call now at 1-800-586-6065. That's 1-800-586-6065. It was the moment I realized I was about to lose my job. I found myself searching for pills instead of just being with my family. At that moment, I finally decided to get help for my addiction to opioids. The prescription painkillers. At TurnToHelpNow.com, you'll learn that opioid dependence is a real medical condition and that there are different ways to get help, including those in a private setting, without the need for daily visits. That moment led me to TurnToHelpNow.com. Make now your moment. Visit TurnToHelpNow.com today. Final segment of the show here for the 2012-2013 campaign. Of course, the 2013-2014 campaign of the show, August 25th, 2013, it will be kicking off. So look forward to that. Of course, we will continue, though, with Tiger Net Talk throughout the summer. And make sure you go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com to find all our archive programs. And also follow us on Twitter. We're at Clemson Sports. We'll keep you up on any news that you might want to be aware of. And I do want to tell you that it means a lot to me to have you here with me each and every week. Uh, it, 
you can't imagine uh, how much time we put into doing the program. And this may be the final episode that I ever do of the Clemson Hotline. Uh, I've enjoyed my time with CRM Sports, and uh, we're going to have some talks over the summer about the direction of the program and what we're doing. 187 episodes since I came on uh, one night way back when. It was March 31st, 2008, the first time I ever uh, was on the air on the Clemson Hotline. I'm going to play that clip for you real quick, though, as host Red Reynolds from Hudson Smokehouse in Lexington, South Carolina, had me on the program. Lawton, tell us more about, about your podcast. Well, uh, basically, Tiger Net Talk was a podcast I started out of my home just uh, for my love of the Tigers and, and uh, Clemson sports in general. And the show really took off, and it's been going real well. And I was just uh, excited to hear about what you guys were doing with Clemson Hotline. And it's, it's just been a real great opportunity to come down here tonight and, and uh, see how y'all are putting this show together. I think it's an exciting thing for Tiger fans across the state. And you're sitting uh, aside, right beside the legendary Red Reynolds. Absolutely. Red's been in the business for over 50 years. I, I don't want to give away your age, Red, but you have, um, you know, you're healthier than I am. He's I can put it, put it that way. He's 53. He started not this. Many, not many folks call me a boy anymore, so <laughs> there's not many of them around <laughs> older than I am. Well, put, put it this way, Red. You walk more up straight uh, uh, than I do. Oh, you know, it, I, but uh, the aches and the pains come, too. Uh, so in fact, sometimes some of my aches have pains. Uh, it, that comes with the territory. I've got aches and pains, and that comes from sitting down and Williams Bryce watching mediocre football for... Uh, well, well, you said uh, that. I did 20-something. Hey, you know, I, I love them, I, I, but I'm not going to blow sunshine and tell you that, that all you know, wine and roses in Columbia over there by uh, George Rogers Boulevard and, and Bluff Road. Well, you know, that's... You win some, you lose some. Some rained out, uh, so uh, we let it be. You know. <laughs> but, uh, let's get back to, to Clemson and uh, what's going on up there. Let's get back to Lawton here. And tell us. Uh, well, you know, I think it's exciting um, with all the programs right now, as a matter of fact. I mean, the baseball, baseball program, they're doing okay. Not as good as I think some expected at this point. But I like what Oliver Purnell's done with the basketball program. And I'm sure last week you all probably discussed the unfortunate loss to Villanova, uh, a tough one. Uh, I don't think we'll get over that one for a while, but uh, Tommy Bowden and the football program seem to be uh, heading in the right direction. I think um, looking back over the past few years, uh, Tiger fans have seen a, a great increase in recruiting. This year's got an exciting class coming in, and, and clearly uh, all the programs right now seem to be on the track for success. I wonder sometimes about the women's basketball program, but um, hopefully they'll get that turned around and, and – uh, get everything going the right way there again too uh, after Jim Davis made had some great years and uh, made some runs in the tournament with uh, Toro Umo and the likes back in the uh, mid 90s um, certainly hope they get it turned around as well but all's well right now in Clemson and I think it's an exciting time a uh, football season right around the corner and I know those guys out there who love baseball are in it and they've probably got their sunflower seeds and and ready to go out to the ball games. Well, and, uh, and how long, how many days, 161, oh. two days till the hill? Uh, it, that's like, probably about right. Yeah, that, I think pretty I saw close. that the <laughs> There it is. There it is. The first time I was ever on the program, March 31st, 2008. And I saw some people in the chat room say, what? What, what do you mean you may not be with the program? Look, that doesn't mean that there won't be two Clemson Sports Talk shows for you each and every week. It doesn't mean that there might not be another way to pick up our program and what we've done. We tried to grow it. We tried to do the best we can with it. And I thank you so much for being here with us each and every week. Uh, whether we're sitting in this seat in August or not, I just want to let you all know how much it means to me to have had this opportunity. And uh, I've learned and learned so much from you and grown so much doing the program. And we will continue, though, with Tiger Net Talk throughout the summer. And I will continue to update on our plans and our expectations for the future. Uh, and if we're here in August, great. We'll enjoy being with you. And if not, best of luck to the folks at CRM Sports. Best of luck to John Rawl, the executive producer of the program, and everybody, Matt Lupo, Red Reynolds, all the guys who have been a part of this show, a part of this show throughout the years. I certainly appreciate you being here, and I look forward to speaking with you again real soon. And as always, y'all take care now, and go Tigers!